Hey there. Welcome to a short clinical case discussion with me, Devika Vendra. Let's dive right into it. The case we have here today is that of a 47-year-old man who comes to the office due to bloating and abdominal discomfort for the last two months. The patient's abdomen has become progressively enlarged in association with a 9 kg weight gain. He also notes fatigue and difficulty breathing while walking up and down the steps, but denies chest pain and palpitations. The patient drinks 8 to 10 beers a day, but does not use tobacco or illicit drugs. He has no relevant medical history. His temperature is 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Blood pressure is 130 by 65 millimeters of mercury. Pulse is 75 beats per minute and respiratory rate is 15 per minute. Physical examination shows sclerolicteris, palmar edema, multiple spider angiomas. The abdomen was soft and non-tender and a fluid wave is present. A right upper quadrant ultrasound reveals a nodular shrunken liver as well as the presence of fluid in the intraperitoneal cavity. Diagnostic paracentesis reveals a straw yellow colored fluid. Which of the following fluid analysis tests should be performed? And the options are on your screen. I'm going to ask you to pause the video here, take a minute, make a diagnosis on your own, then come back and we'll go through it together. Right, I hope you took a shot. Now let's go through this step by step. The correct option here is cell count and differential. Let's look at the entire case. Our very first clue came in right in the beginning when the patient complained of bloating and abdominal discomfort. He also says that he notes some fatigue and difficulty breathing, but there was no chest pain or palpitations and that helps us to rule out our cardiac causes. The patient also drinks 10, 8 to 10 beers a day. That gives us the history of alcoholism. On physical examination, we find scleral icteris, palmar erythema, and multiple spider angiomas. Let's keep that in mind. We also find a fluid wave. Now, on ultrasound, you find a nodular shrunken liver, which indicates liver cirrhosis, as well as the presence of fluid in the intraperitoneal cavity, which was straw yellow in color. Now, with this entire case in mind, the picture painted is that of our diagnosis, ascites. Ascites is the accumulation of fluid in the intraperitoneal cavity associated with portal hypertension. Now, the question asked to us was about diagnostic paracentesis, the investigation. But let's talk a little bit about ascites before we get to the investigation, right? Ascites can have various different etiologies. The most common one is liver cirrhosis with portal hypertension, which accounts for 85% of its cases. The remaining 15% is caused by non-serotic causes like malignancies with metastasis in the abdomen, infections like tuberculosis and pancreatitis. Now, what are the clinical manifestations of a patient with ascites? First and foremost, you have abdominal distension. And this is so insidious in its progression that the patient might not even realize the increase in abdominal girth to be abnormal. And they might just mistake it for an increase in their weight. By the time they do realize it, they have accumulated about one to two liters of ascitic fluid in the abdominal cavity. Along with this, you also have anasarca or peripheral edema generalized peripheral edema due to a fluid overload condition. A patient also feels the shortness of breath. Now, this can be due to two different mechanisms. The first being the accumulation of fluid in the abdominal cavity pushes up against the diaphragm, causing a reduced amount of space in the thorax available for the lung to expand, causing shortness of breath. The second is called hepatic hydrothorax wherein the fluid from the abdominal cavity diffuses into the thorax and possibly even into the pleural cavity, causing a shortness of breath. Now, the patient may also feel fatigue, weakness, and malnutrition. In cases caused by chronic liver disease, as in the case of liver cirrhosis, you may also see certain stigmata, 
like palmer erythema, scleral icteris, and spider angioma. Let's move on to the diagnosis. Beginning with physical examination. Now on palpation, what you will almost always see in a case of liver cirrhosis causing ascites is splenomegaly. On percussion, you will find a dull note on the flanks on the, in the abdominal region. You must always elicit the shifting dullness test. The first investigation to be done in a case of ascites is a diagnostic paracentesis or ascitic tap. The things to be considered in this tap are the color of the fluid aspirated, where a straw yellow color indicates benign conditions like liver cirrhosis. A bloody consistency indicates trauma, malignancy, or in rare cases, tuberculosis. If it is milky, it indicates chylus. And if it is turbid, it shows the possibility of an infection. Next, you look at the total and differential cell count. Now, why is this done? Because a common complication of ascites is SBP, that is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. A common characteristic of which is a polymorphonuclear cell count of more than 250 per millimeter cube. If you recall, this was the correct answer for our case. Next, you look at the total protein content, which is low in the case of cirrhosis and high in the case of non-cirrhotic causes of ascites. The last thing you look at is SAAG, which stands for Serum Ascitic Fluid Albumin Gradient. This is calculated by finding the difference between the serum albumin and the acytic fluid albumin levels. A high SAG that is greater than 1.1 gram per deciliter indicates liver cirrhosis. Next, we perform an ultrasound or a CT scan of the abdomen to look for presence of fluid in the intraperitoneal cavity as well as the structure of the liver. The last thing you do is an upper GI endoscopy. This is a very important test. Here's why. Ascites indicates portal hypertension, right? Another important characteristic or a feature of portal hypertension is varices. Now, varices are dilated blood vein vessels or veins to be specific in the lower esophagus as well as the gastric region. These, if ruptured, could cause a fatal life-threatening condition. And the test to investigate this is upper GI endoscopy, which must be done at the earliest indication of portal hypertension. Moving on to the treatment. In mild hypertension, you begin by advising the patient to restrict their salt intake to less than two grams per day. If that doesn't work, you move on to restricting the water consumption. In slightly more severe cases, or in the cases where salt and water restriction does not work, diuretics are given. The diuretics used are loop diuretics like furosemide and aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone. They begin with a lower dose and keep increasing the dose as required. However, if you reach the highest possible safe dose and the patient shows no improvement, the patient is said to have refractory ascites. In this case, liver transplant is the only possible treatment. However, in the waiting period for a donor, a possible treatments that can be done are TIPS, which stands for transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt, or repeated large volume paracentesis. That brings us to the end of our case. I hope this helped you. Thank you.